Hey guys, and welcome to the channel where we're looking at everything to do with narcissism and how to heal, how to break through, and how to live a life full of purpose, joy, and freedom. So my name is Doug Womack, and I'm here today to help you to kind of get some understanding of who it is you are and how you're going to move forward with your life. Now you've discovered that you have been in a narcissistic relationship or you are in a narcissistic relationship. Now today's topic is scapegoating. Have you been a scapegoat? Now, what is a scapegoat? So a scapegoat is in a family system, in a narcissistic family system. Now, a narcissist has to have uh, someone in the family who they can blame everything on. Now, the reason that narcissists do this is because it's kind of a projection of themselves. They have obviously problems, they have obviously shame, they have uh, many issues that they don't want to uh, uh, the world to know about, they have lots of imperfections. So rather than admit to them, rather than to take responsibility for those problems, for that, for their internal self, for who they really are, they push that on you, they push that on someone else because they want you to take the blame. They want you to take their shame. They want you to take all that rubbish and they just want to dump it on your head. Now, this can be extremely detrimental to anyone who this happens to because you're going to start to believe that you are what they say you are. You are to blame. You know, you, you should feel rubbish and you're not good enough and you are this kind of loner and you're going to be pushed out of the family. Because the narcissist, what they do is they make sure that everyone else sees you as the scapegoat as well. Now, not everyone will. Some people will be on your side. But the problem is when you're living in a narcissistic family, if you have, for instance, a golden child and you have um, the enabler and all these different people around the narcissist, this kind of solar system of narcissistic uh, personalities or the kind of family members, they're going to be trying to survive as well in their own way and of course some of them have it better than others but they're all going to be trying to survive so it makes it so much easier for them a bit like kids on the playground you know you're going to have that bully who's going to be bullying everyone now some people are going to be brave enough and stand up to that bully but others are going to be like just running away and just glad that it didn't happen to them that they're not the one being bullied and this happens in a family system too you can't really blame people for doing this it's very natural and especially when they've been brought up into a family like this, they think it's real. They've been brainwashed by the narcissist too. You know, that cult of the narcissist has affected them as well. So they have become uh, someone who will also use you as a scapegoat. This is a great survival strategy for them. Now, as the, as the scapegoat, you're going to find that you grow up and you wonder why this happened to you. You're going to start to wonder if this is true. And I'm, I'm here to tell you now that none of this is true. What happened to you was because the narcissist has a fantasy. And in that fantasy, they have to be perfect. Now, of course, they don't see people around them as anything apart from objects. And they feel entitled to do what they want with those objects. So as an extension of them as an object, they are going to worry that, if you look bad, they look bad. So if they look bad or something's not right, they can blame it on you. And often you find that the scapegoat is someone who's willing to stand up to the narcissist, who's the one who says, hey, that's not right. Why would you do that? Asking those why questions, the questions that the narcissist hates. And as soon as you ask a narcissist why, they're going to get upset. They're going to be like, how dare you question me? They hate questions because questions, what do they do? Especially why questions, they get deep into their inner soul, they get deep into that kind of part of them where the shame's hiding, where they don't know who they really are. So when you ask them why, that makes them have to self-reflect. They hate self-reflection. So if you that's one reason why the narcissist might have picked you as the scapegoat because you're stronger and then they need to bring the strong ones down. So don't think that it's anything true if they said that you're not good enough. Or if you're doing your own thing, if you're dressing how you want to dress rather than dressing how they want to dress, if you're going to the, to the sports or the school that, you, that you, know, you want to do and you're not living up to their uh, expectations or their kind of, we want you to behave in a certain way, then again, well done to you to, for, for being strong. But that is the reason 
where narcissists are going to pick and find this scapegoat. And of course, this isn't right for the narcissist to do this, but this is what they do. So how can you begin to heal from being the scapegoat? Now, this is difficult because once you've been the scapegoat, this can really affect you very deeply inside. The narcissist needs you for everything. They may be not only belittle you and shame you and all that kind of stuff, but they might also be like, oh, that's the one who's going to care for me. That's the one who's going to visit me every day. That's the one who's going to look after me when I'm older. So they might be this, really this trauma bond that's built in that they need you and you believe that they do need you. And, you know, you believe this whole negative story that they've created. Now, if you can get away, brilliant. So many people do, but so many people also don't get away. It's, it's not always possible. So that healing has to come from inside. You have to change that story about who you are and start to really change that framework. Start to see this person in front of you. I sometimes say as like a toddler, you know, if a toddler was saying all this stuff to you, how would you behave? But start seeing them as well as someone who's in a mental institute imagine just imagine for a minute that they're they're locked in a in a prison cell with a with a you know a jacket on like this and they can't move because they're some insane criminal you know this insane asylum that they've been put in imagine that person now telling you that you're wrong and you're doing this you're now going to look at them from a different viewpoint. You're gonna look, look at them now from a different angle. So if you are that scapegoat, start to look at the world through the lens of your own beliefs, of your own, uh, and if you don't know what your own beliefs are, if you don't know what your own purpose is, if you don't know what this is because you've spent so long in this narcissistic framework, then this is work that needs doing. And it's not impossible, it can happen and it can uh, over time, change how you look at the world, change how you look at yourself and heal, which definitely is possible.